I think it's the most ridiculous un-American policy ever. And no matter how many times I explain it to people, it still sounds so stupid. I'm Ami Horowitz, and there's a decades-old international postal agreement which is costing the U.S. taxpayer hundreds of millions of dollars annually, an untold amount of American jobs. Let's find out more about it. Ordering things online has reshaped the way we shop and consume. In the U.S. alone, we spent nearly $1 trillion, that's trillion with a T, purchasing online goods last year. It's the fastest growing segment of consumer sales and is becoming a more important part of our economy by the day. And this marketplace is quickly becoming the domain of the Chinese, in large part because the e-commerce playing field is tilted sharply in favor of Chinese merchants at the expense of their U.S. competitors. Chinese dominance in the cyber sales arena is a result of a number of issues, including low labor costs, almost non-existent regulations, and an increasingly large part of the Chinese success is their incredibly low shipping costs. Ever wonder why shipping a phone charger from China is free, while buying the same or similar products shipping from the US is like six bucks? And shipping costs have become a big part of the decision-making process when buying something online. The primary reason for this imbalance is a decades-old arrangement for incoming packages set by a UN agency called the Universal Postal Union. A deal was made to ship other countries' packages, including China, anywhere in the U.S. for about $1.50, without regard to the real costs borne by the U.S. Postal Service. I'm from Skipback. That's where my business is. And if I send something from Skipback to Skipback, it costs more than sending something from Beijing to skip back. We are probably providing a lot of their profit margin by subsidizing that leg when they're shipping into the US. And the subsidy difference is really dramatic. We're not talking about a couple pennies, we're talking about dollars per unit. More galling is that China is treated as a group three country, meaning it qualifies for some of the lowest postal rates within this arrangement, along with Gabon, Botswana, Cuba, and other third world countries. They're basically sitting in a system that considers them to be uh, China 40, 50 years ago. And they're getting treated like that in terms of the rates that our postal service has agreed to provide them. Categorizing China as a tier three country in 1874 made a lot of sense, right? The rickshaw was not the best form of transportation. And no single player in e-commerce has benefited from this more than the Chinese behemoth Alibaba. It sells three times as many products as Amazon and has its eye on dominating the U.S. market with assistance from the U.S. Postal Service. This has created a situation in which U.S. businesses competing with Chinese companies are at a massive disadvantage in terms of shipping costs. The U.S. Postal Service admitted that losses from this postal deal alone amount to over $170 million in 2017. And as e-commerce from China continues to explode, so will the losses suffered by the Postal Service and consequently the U.S. taxpayer. Jamie Smaldone is owner of Mighty Mug, a manufacturer of innovative mugs and cups sold around the world directly to consumers and through major retailers. He and his company find themselves in the crosshairs of this problem. Increasingly, American shoppers are expecting free shipping. So that means for American businesses, we many times absorb part or the full cost of the shipping in order to get the sale to transact. But the reality is the Chinese shipper able to exploit these terminal dues is able to give free shipping on almost everything. So they have a massive advantage. Now, if you put that in perspective to the retailers in this country that are losing market share, they're having to reduce store accounts, lay off tons of people, there is a massive ripple effect. How does that impact how many truckers are needed to move the goods? What happens to those 30, 40, 100,000 people that are now laid off? Like, how does that change the labor market? If our rate was that low, we could either be making exponentially more in profits which we would pummel back into research and development, new products, hiring, expansion, all sorts of things. Or we could lower our cost to the, to the customer 
and that would increase our volume. It's pretty black and white to me that if we had a lower shipping rate, we'd be, we'd be doing a lot more business. In a bizarre and disturbing twist, this postal arrangement essentially forces the American taxpayer to subsidize Chinese counterfeit goods coming into the U.S. because they take advantage of the same shipping discount. Counterfeits have moved from creepy guys with trench coats and back alleys to being front and center on the world's largest digital storefronts. The counterfeit market is a $1.7 trillion per year industry, larger than the illicit drug trade costing over $20 billion in lost profits and millions of jobs. And that market is expected to double within the next five years, with the vast majority of it coming from China. At one point, Apple reported that 90% of all so-called Apple products listed on Amazon were fakes. In fact, both Alibaba and Amazon are reaping rich rewards from these fake goods, while costing American retailers and manufacturers billions. Competition for this product isn't just other products that act like your product, they basically are your product and they're out competing you for the remainder of your market. As more and more sales go to e-commerce, we started to notice a ton of knockoff items, all of them shipping from China. And that's when we start to look into it. How is it possible that they're able to offer our product essentially for so much lower than what we can offer. But then when it turns out that our own postal service is also providing a subsidy to that shipper, what is this thing and why are we doing this? It's a very predictable, almost natural progression. First is, wow, this looks like our product. Um, we have patented X amount of features on this product and they just kind of stole it and they're shipping it in at $3 a unit. I sell it for 20. They have free shipping and I don't. There's a new e-commerce phenomenon called dropshipping, where middlemen take a product already listed on an e-commerce site, most notably Alibaba's AliExpress, and rebrand that product as their own on social media sites, usually with a huge markup. There are hundreds of YouTube sites dedicated to explain how to set up your own dropshipping site. When a sale is made, AliExpress simply ships the product directly to the consumer. So a single listing on AliExpress can have thousands of people marketing it on social media as their own product. It has poured gas on the fire of the Chinese shipping problem. Five years ago, the Chinese seller would list it on whatever platform they, they were listing it on, whether it be Ali, Alibaba, eBay, Amazon, and it would be this, this one listing. And what drop shipping has done has allowed that one listing to permeate into thousands of listings because of these dropshippers relisting and marking up the counterfeit item. Another issue with subsidizing shipping to the US is that it essentially makes Chinese companies immune to returns. They basically don't have to concern themselves as much with quality or safety. I ordered a phone charger from Alibaba to see how this process would play out. So I just got my package from China that I ordered uh, a few days ago. Uh, it is a, uh, what I assume is a counterfeit Samsung charger. It's free shipping, of course. The product itself cost me about six or seven bucks. And I wanted to find out what it would cost me to return it if I was unhappy with the product. Let's find out. Hi, how are you? So I wanted to mail this to China. Could you, could you price it out for me? Be 14, 25. Okay, um, and how long will it take to get there? About 10 to 15 business days. Because I only paid a few bucks for it. Because I'm trying to return it back to China, so it doesn't make sense to. I got When I got it here, it was free shipping from China. How did, how did they, how does that happen? I have no idea. I don't know what they do in China. But with, with us, that's how much it's going to be. Okay, all right, now nah, it's too expensive to send back. Okay, thanks a lot. So I guess the next obvious question is can we get out of this thing? We're not really in the treaty. That is, we have not a formally approved this convention. So it doesn't appear to be binding on the United States as a matter of international law. You know, what I think we should do is, you know, giving our, our postal partners a reasonable notice, we should begin charging the same rates we charge Americans for the delivery of inbound packages. It seems to me that this is not only a fixable issue, but it is a truly bipartisan issue. As e-commerce continues to increasingly swallow up our retail dollars, putting U.S. companies on a level playing field with their Chinese competitors seems like a pretty important thing to do.